What's up YouTube? It's about that time again where I take you through the EDC gear that I've used the most over the past couple of months. But this time around it will actually be a two-parter. In the first video I take you through the gear that I've carried on my person and in the second video we'll talk about my bag setup. So go make yourself comfortable, maybe grab yourself a beer and let's get into it. Before we get into the gear part though, let's just take a quick minute to establish what EDC actually means. EDC, for those of you who are not familiar, stands for everyday carry. So basically, the daily essential items that you don't leave home without. For most people, that's basically their phone, wallet and keys, but there is so much more useful stuff that you could carry and the sky is pretty much the limit here. Obviously, whatever gear you decide to carry yourself is a totally personal decision and highly dependent on your individual circumstances. My own EDC system has actually shifted quite a lot since I've created this YouTube channel. You see, when I uploaded my first video back in October of 2019, I was still living far out in the countryside, about 35 kilometers away from the next autobahn. Beautiful landscapes and a lot of peace and quiet. I absolutely loved it. It also got very dark at night and especially in between the small towns and villages there was often little to no cell phone reception. So especially if you, like myself back then, drive an old unreliable car with a tendency to break down every now and again, you quickly realize the value of having a high powered flashlight as well as a couple of other tools on your person at all time. Back then I also had access to a small tool shed I could work in and I used that to build stuff like a new kitchen and a new balcony for the place my fiancé and I lived in back then. Since then however, Corona hit the world in early 2020, I finished my second state exam and was thrown onto the job market in the midst of the first lockdown and the economic downturn that accompanied it. So all of the plans that I've made for the future basically went to shit. Despite everything, I got lucky and managed to find a new very nice job in no time, but that meant that we had to move about 400 kilometers further down south in Germany into a region of the Schwarzwald aka Black Forest. It is by far the most beautiful area I've ever lived in, the Black Forest is magical, there are ample opportunities for hikes, the French border is literally just a 20 minute drive from our new place and even the Swiss Alps and Northern Italy are very much nearby. I also now live in an apartment in the middle of the city, spend most of my week working as a lawyer, drive a new car without any reliability issues and have spent far less time out camping in the woods or working in a wood workshop and more time eating in restaurants, out hiking and drinking the fine wines that this region of the world has to offer. I can't tell you which of these two lives is better, I certainly enjoy both, but that's also not what this video is about. This video is about the gear that I carry with me on a daily basis. And so basically all of this was just to show you that my circumstances have changed and that I therefore had to adapt the gear that I carry with me on a daily basis to fit those needs. Now that you hopefully understand where I'm coming from and without any further ado, let's get into the gear. If you've watched any of my other EDC videos over the past year or so, you will have seen my previous EDC wallet, which was the Grain Wallet by Tauros Camp. Now that wallet is still my favorite wallet of all times, and if I could only keep one wallet for the rest of my life, I would go for the Grain Wallet in a heartbeat. I would probably just upgrade to a Shell Cordovan leather version, which sadly wasn't available back when I bought mine. With that being said, on a recent trip to the Netherlands with my fiance, I saw one of these bad boys in a store and I simply couldn't resist buying it. It's called the Mini Wallet by the company Secret, Sacred, I don't know, which as it turns out is a Dutch company and they do produce their wallets in the Netherlands. So that's bonus points in my book. The wallet itself is beautiful, I think there's no way around it and I even consider it better looking than the Grain Wallet. It's also a fair bit smaller. The mini wallet is basically a piece of leather wrapped around an aluminium card holder. The color I went for is called vintage brown and so far the leather has started to age nicely. The main card holder can hold up to 5 cards and there's this neat little lever at the bottom which is used to quickly feather up your cards for easy access. It's addictive to fidget with, so you better keep in mind that there's an arm down at the bottom of the wallet that scrapes up your card every time you use that lever. But anyway, the mechanism works beautifully and makes life easy. Open up the leather and you see two more slots for your cards and this plastic thingy for your paper bills. You can store paper bills in there like you could in basically any regular bifold wallet, so no having to fold your bills three or four times before you can put them away with this wallet, no sir. The only downside here really, at least from a practical standpoint, is the lack of a coin pocket. 
A coin pocket would probably ruin the design, so I'm glad that it's not there, but it still poses a problem. I have resorted to storing my coins in another wallet that I keep in my backpack, but more on that in part 2 of this EDC update. On another note, the grain wallet I used previously also had a slot to store my apartment key, which the mini wallet doesn't have, so I simply attached my key to my Carl Friedrich key organizer, which I also keep in either my jacket or my backpack. So overall, I'm really enjoying my time with this new wallet so far. It takes up little to no room in my pocket, feels solid, looks great and ages well. Good purchase, no regrets. The next item here is my watch. I actually have two main watches that I cycle between all the time, the SIN 104 and my hand winding Junghans Maxbill. If you want to know more about either of these watches, feel free to check out the dedicated videos I made about them, linked in the description below. The third item on the table is my pocket tool, which is the Jack 3 by Italian knife maker Lion Steel. This is a beautiful modern reinterpretation of an absolute classic. This particular model is made from titanium with green micarta handle scales, but there are other materials available as well. It is also available with only the blade, blade and cap lifter and the full blade, cap lifter and corkscrew we got here. As I mentioned earlier, I now live in a wine region, which I thoroughly enjoy, so this tool came in handy a lot this summer. Aside from that, it also looks just gorgeous. The blade comes hair popping sharp right out of the box and is made from M390 steel. If you don't know what that means, it's basically a very modern type of steel that is highly corrosion resistant and will also keep a good edge for a very long time. The long cap lifter slash screwdriver slash prying and scraping tool is always nice to have. So yeah, it has been a very neat and great looking companion over the past couple of months and I've basically not carried anything else since I've got it. The last main item on my list is this flashlight and this is a big one for me. This is the FWAA in titanium by the company Lumentop. Now there's a bit of history to this light and how it came into the world. Basically there once was this flashlight forum which designed its own flashlight and got Lumentop to produce it for them. The first model was the FW3A, which I bought twice because I love it so much, but since this one was powered by an 18650 lithium ion battery, it was always very bulky for something that is meant to be carried in your pockets. It's also a bit overpowered, considering that I now live in the city and not out in the countryside anymore. So the old FW3A has not seen much pocket time over the past year. Lumentop also released a shorter version of Satellite later on, which I also bought, but it uses the same diameter of battery, so while it might be shorter than the old FW3A, it's just as bulky. Recently though, the flashlight gods have blessed us with yet another rendition of this concept, the FWAA. This light looks very similar in terms of its overall design and proportions to the original FW3A, but it's powered by a 14500 lithium ion battery, which is only about the same size as your average AA battery, so it's a lot more compact. You can easily fit it in your pocket without it being awkward, but thanks to the tech that is hidden in there, especially those three LEDs and the 14500 battery, you get a ridiculous max output of 1400 lumens. The run times are also impressive, but obviously only in lower modes. The 1400 lumen turbo mode should only be used for very short bursts because it drains the battery fast and the LED head of the light gets burning hot in no time flat. But still, 1400 lumens is very close to what your average car headlamp would churn out. Having that much power in such a small light is ridiculous and I love it. The light is operated by this tail switch and, especially to those of you who are new to this line of flashlights, all the settings and options you can go through with just this one button might be a little bit overwhelming. Oh my god! I might actually make a separate review about this flashlight at some later stage, but for now, just let it be known that it is every bit as great as I wanted it to be. The new sandblasted titanium looks very clean and perfectly fits the aesthetics of this carrying system. Also, the light overall seems a lot more refined and nicely made than the first rendition of the titanium FW3A. But anyway, that's it for my main items, but I still have a couple of honorary mentions while we're at it. These are my car keys, I obviously carry them whenever I need to drive my car. They spend most of their lives in my jacket pockets or in my backpack, rarely if ever will I put them in my pants pockets, and there's nothing more I can say about it. For my other keys, as I mentioned earlier, I still use this Carl Friedrich key organizer. I also still carry a Leatherman style PS or at least a small Victorinox classic on most days. 
This DIPS offers a nice amount of added functionality, especially with its pliers and tweezers, but the nail file and small scissors also come in handy very frequently. More than that though, I will forever be more comfortable whipping out one of these small tools in public or in the office than I will be taking out my main tool. These smaller tools simply raise a lot less eyebrows. So yeah, my phone is still the iPhone 10 in the Nomad leather case, haven't seen any reason to upgrade just yet, but maybe that will change when Apple announces the new iPhone 13, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And that's it. That's the stuff that I carry with me on a daily basis, at least in my pockets. Let me know what you think about this system and if you have any specific questions about any of the items I've shown in this video. Stay tuned for the second part of this video in which we will be covering my backpack system. Uh, that video should be out in about a week or so from now. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you tuning in. If you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. That's it for today though. Have a good one. Bye bye.